Hello everyone. Today let's go over our first example for our Rhino and Grasshopper course for industrial design students. So I've opened up uh, the Rhino and uh, let's go to the front view by typing picture. Let's bring our reference photo for our first example. So this is a handheld um, vacuum for the food package. So this can take the air out of the food package, which will make the food uh, can stay longer in the refrigerator. So the, from the top to the bottom of this device, it's about four inches tall. Let's turn on the orthogonal, type in four inches and hit enter. So as you can see that this default uh, unit for this software as I set up is millimeter, but of course you can change it to whatever you want. And uh, let me move this top point to this line and scale it from the bottom and then to the end of the line. Perfect, move it. So now I'll go to the perspective view, move it back a little bit. Also come to here and make a new layer called ref pick. I will send this to the layer. The reason that I bring it back a little bit off the XZ plan is because uh, I will draw the lines on this plan right here. And uh, if it's uh, overlapped, it will cause some confusion sometimes. So now I will lock this reference image since I don't want to move it anymore, uh, not for a while. And I'll go to the front view and start to draw this shape. Before doing that, let's check what this shape looks like. Uh, this actually looks like two columns kind of welded together. And uh, that's what we're going to do first is to uh, draw the cro cross section. And uh, I'll also come to another layer to say ref curve. and I'll make it the current layer. So I will change the color to blue. So it yeah, will be obvious, be easy for us to see. Turn off the orthogonal and start the drawing process. Okay, and then I will go to another layer or just model. I mean, this is totally up to you and I will change this to red and start to draw the lines, the profiles that will go across those sections. Okay, so I will select this point maybe, select here, here, here. to the end and to the middle, perfect. And then I will adjust those curves a little bit, right? So that the profile or uh, the curves can basically showcase the profile of the whole area. and then hit escape. Next step, oh yeah, I will also move these points to there. Okay, so next step, I will do exactly the same thing for the bottom side. Perfect. Now I adjust it a little bit. Move this along this direction. 
Perfect. So those three lines has to be on the same, uh, those, those three points have to be on the same reference line. That means that this part, the tangent will be uh, zero. So the tangent will be equal so that they will have a smooth end over here. Now let's move to the perspective again, and uh, let's start by drawing a circle. And uh, I will choose a two-point mode. This point and, oh, sorry. Two-point mode and this point and this point. Perfect. Next, I will trim off half of the circle and start to do the um, sweep two rails, but before that, let me adjust those points one more time. So sweep two, first rail, second rail, section, hit enter. And let's change this to normal lines. Okay, I can also hide the reference curves. Send to reference curves. So I will change the display mode to render to shade it, and then you can see that turn on the zebra, and as you can see that this is perfectly smooth, which is exactly what we want. Okay. The next thing I will do is I will go back to the front view and observe this uh, shape. You can see that there is some part that's bumped like bumping up and uh, this part is lower and that's model dead. And uh, in order to do so, we need to kind of split this surface first um, and I'll explain to you why. So for example, let's copy and paste another surface here, send it to a layer called back ops, hide it. The reason that I will always copy and paste something that I spend a lot of time to model to the backup layer, just to in case that in the future when you need to adjust something uh, and you cannot go back to so many steps earlier, you can just always go to the backup uh, layers and take that out and use it. Let's go to the front view and then start the cutting process. So although this looks like a curve, but actually that's caused by the 3D perspective. And if this line got projected to a 2D surface on the right side or the, on the front view, it should be a straight line. And that's what we will see here. And I will turn on the reference curves and uh, I will cut here, here, change it to current layer. Okay, how about I would make another layer called cutting curve. Change it to red. Okay, and uh, we will copy, paste, and kind of move it up here. Perfect. And then I will extract um, extract a curve, ISO curve here. So I'll type in extract ISO curve. And uh, you can see that this kind of ISO curve will take the UV directions and um, get a line on that direction. And right now I want to get something cross here. So I will change the direction from U to V. And uh, I will put it somewhere here. Okay, and uh, I'll extend these curves a little bit more towards to that line. Okay, now let's look at here that the actual model this in this part, it should be a little bit flat. And um, uh, this part is pretty bumpy because of we used the sweep two rails. In order to change that, we have to adjust it a little bit. 
by control those points. I will turn on those control points first and then move it inward a little bit. Be careful that sometimes those, if you make some dramatic change, this will completely change the uh, zebra, zebra lines, how it behave, which means that continuity of the surface will be ruined. So you have to be careful about that when you are doing this kind of uh, operation. Always come back and check just to be safe. So I can go to the top view and then move it. Make sure that I'm selecting all the good points to move. Oh, sorry. Move it in a little bit more. Same as this part. Okay, and then let's take a look. This is great. Let's turn on the zero line. Again, okay, the continuity are still good to go. So the next part, I will split this. And before that, let's explain what, why we need to do that. Uh, so I will copy and paste this, move it to here, okay? And then if, for example, I want to have this bumpy part on the top, on the back, I will turn on the control lines and then move it back here. Right, but you can see that once I change this part, the front part will be changed accordingly because of the algorithms behind this continuous uh, surface. So we have to split them uh, so that we can do this kind of operation. And again, I will copy and paste and bring this to the backups layers. Go to the front view and the split. I will select the object to split. And uh, oh yeah, right before that, I also want to see after splitting how this kind of like curves will behave on this surface. And what I will do is I will type in project and I will click record history. You will know why in a second. I'll select the curves to project, hit enter and also select the surface. Sorry, I have to go to the front view. I will do it again. Record history, select the curves, hit enter and select the surface and hit enter. Okay, and then uh, we come here. You can see that this doesn't really comes very well, right? This kind of curvature change. And I would, what I would do is that I would select those points and uh, by adjusting those points, this kind of curvature will be changed accordingly. So now at this point, it looks much better. Okay, so we are trying to maintain this kind of smoothness across this whole surface. Of course, it's not going to be like perfectly smooth all the time, but we are trying to find this asset, uh, like way of controlling things in a more ideal thoughts. So it's not like perfectly same as the previous design, but again, we are trying to find the method behind it, not trying to copy everything and paste it. Uh, if we want to do that, we better use Maya, but that's not really a industrial design uh, software that can generate very accurate surface. So I will come back to the front view and uh, type in split, Some select the object to split, select all the, okay, before that, I will trim this parse and I will, or delete these points, delete these points, come to the front view, trim things in between, hit enter, delete, delete, and the split, the object, change the object to split, hit mm. enter. And this says the split command broke history on one object, which is exactly what we want because we, we're projecting these lines into the surface. And if we kind of change something on the surface, this history will be destroyed. So uh, that makes sense and hit okay. And then we will get this surface. Okay, so I will send this to backup. Although I'm pretty confident that I will never use this again, but just in case, just for the safety of our process. The next step I will do is that 
you can see that there's this uh this part is obviously lower than this part in terms of the like the height of this 3d object so i will move this in a little bit and uh, by changing the model i move it inward a little bit same as this part and go to the front view we will move uh, this part up a little bit higher right here as you can see that okay and also move here a little bit high up also we need to do something over this point same we have to make changes over this controls okay so we come here and look at it this kind of uh, gap is pretty smooth and this is exactly what we want let's double check things are matching very well move up a little bit okay perfect then look at this perspective everything is good next we will finish this transitional surface in between by using blend surface and i will type in blend surf select the first edge second edge okay we go to the front view and adjust this uh, transition a little bit more it okay, okay. and uh, also yeah it okay and let's see we'll go back to this to the default layer okay i will check the zebra everything is perfect we are still continuous so the continuity is perfect everything is great okay let's look at the overall shape change it to rendered this, this looks legit perfect so we will join them together onto the same surface and then mirror them check the zebra again All the points, uh, all the lines are continuous through the edge of different surface. That means the continuity has been preserved. However, we come here and we find some problems here. That is because when we were trying to blend the surface from this edge to this edge, we kind of ignored this uh, edge here. So what we need to do is we're going to uh, use a command called match surface and select the untrimmed surface first sorry before that let me explode this again and i will type in match surf select untrimmed surface first and then select the surface to match and i we will play with uh, uh match surface by changing all the settings right here after so many tries i realized that preserve iso curve direction has to be clicked and hit ok Okay, so everything now is, let's turn on the zebra line, line again. So it's pretty good. And the it's uh, definitely good to go for our process. Okay, so the next part we will do, oh, of course, we will delete this half and uh, join this half. The next step I will model here is this thing right here. And same process, I'll go to the front view. I will come back to the cutting uh curves layer i again this although this looks like um curved curved but it's actually will be 2d like a line a straight line on the 2d project projection but no matter what let's start drawing those lines now and turn off the old snap so it's easier it's not going to attach to anywhere and i will try to be uh consistent with this kind of curve here so it's going to be parallel i would try to again we cannot 
really maintain the accuracy of the surface and build everything accurately by only using a 2D image. So sometimes we have to coordinate with uh, the other part that we have done. So this is what I'm going to do here. And then I'll project this to the view. So I will hide, uh, type project. And before that, I will hit record, select the object to project. So hit enter, select the surface, hit enter, and then we will come back to the 3D environment. And you see that this is very awkward, right? So uh, we need to definitely need to play with that by adjusting this a little bit. And immediately this looks much smoother, okay? So yeah, I think this is good to go actually. Uh, I'll come back to the front view again. All right, so this has this kind of parallel uh, relationships. I will delete the surface, come here, type in split and select object to split. Sorry. Select object to split, select cutting objects. Yeah, it will break the broke the history. Hit OK, no problem. And then I will select the three objects. Control C, Control V. Make them a group, and then send to the backups. The next step is I will create this kind of like edges in between. And in order to do so, uh, let me hi unhide this lines like this object first i kind of isolate them and what i want to do is i want to extrude this edge and make this kind of crease um oh i don't know what's exactly the way to say it maybe the tab and uh before doing that let's sort of analyze what kind of like a fillet uh, is considered as a good fillet so let's start from 2d imagine we have Orthogonal, oh, oh snap, sorry, oh snap. We have three like kind of angles. One is like uh, less than 90 degree. Okay, one is exactly 90 degree and one is like more than um, 90 degree. And let's fill it with five, okay? The radius is five. And I'll select first curve, second curve. So pretty big and do on the 90 degree, okay, in between and do the 80, de uh, like 140 degree, I guess, or 180, yes, something like that. So this is super tiny. And what we want is we want things to be consistent. We want our cur like fillet is always going to be like not too big, not too tiny and consistent through the whole uh, object. What we can do here in this is what happened in 2D when we're trying to fill it to lines. And in 3D, when we try to fill it some surface, we want the two surfaces are kind of perpendicular to each other. So there's a command here. Um, we come to the this and it's called extrude curve, normal to surface. So that means that we'll extrude a curve that sort of like on the direction that perpendicular to the base surface. What I will do is I will select the curve select base surface, right? And then I will do maybe like three millimeter, hit enter. Okay, so yeah, this looks pretty decent for me. And now I'll fill it the surface. I will do the radius 0 0.6, select the first surface and select the second surface. Okay, so I will send them to the same layer, which is the default layer. I'll come back to default. Sorry about that. And join them together as zebra. See, although this looks like pretty weird in between, but when you zoom in, you can see that all the lines are still continuous. So this is very good to go. Okay, I will mirror it. Perfect. Zebra again. Everything is Right. 
and I will work on this part. Same as here, let me isolate this and I will repeat what we just did. Select the curve on the surface, base, base curve, um, surface and hit enter. So I will fill it this surface again. Zebra, it, everything is so smooth. It's great. I uh, hit enter and join. Okay, so let's zebra this again. Although this part generates this edge uh, based because of the limit of the algorithm. But again, this is the surface itself is extremely smooth. So let me mirror this again. Sorry. Join them together and unhide this part. But yeah, that will be the uh, overall shape for this device. And again, zebra, we will see that all the edges are great. So this will be the first part for our uh, first model exam modeling example. Hello everyone. Um, welcome back for our part two for our modeling process for this first example, which is a food package a vacuum. And so last part we in last part we generated this general shape for this device. And let's go to the render mode. And you can see that the surface are very smooth. By verifying this, uh, we can type in zebra and you will see that the continuity of the surface across a whole object is amazing. So uh, let's go back to the, uh, go to the next step, which is we will model this kind of part that's a little bit set down and we will also model this head part. So let's go to the front view. And uh, first I will split this all part into two pieces, which is one and two. Okay, so let's start with splitting this. I will draw a line here and draw a line here. Again, although this looks like there is a curvature here, but that's because of the perspective in the 3D environment. Uh, if you see it from the perfect 2D view, you uh, like perfect front view, it should be a just a straight straight line. Again, before I do anything, I will copy paste and send this to the backup. Okay, so go to the front view and then I'll split this object, select object to split, select cutting objects, hit okay, okay. And then we will get this device and I will hide it. So before this uh, recording of this lecture, I draw this line uh, curve to cut this, you can use this as reference. Actually, the even the degrees of this curve doesn't really matter once you cut it, but you can just do what I have down here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 points. It should be five degrees. Okay, so, and then we will split this uh, device, split the surface. So select object to split, I will select this poly surface and hit enter and cutting object, I will hit space two, and then we will get this surface. And uh, because this is 3D, so we will go to the top, we will select the whole object, explode it, come to here, delete everything, and we will just keep part of it. And then I will hide this surface, send it to backups. So the next step I will do is I will go to the front view. I will, you know, like move this surface inward a little bit uh, towards to this direction, but only part of it. So as you can see here that the transition is perfect from this part to this part, it's 
extremely smooth. And once I point to this part, it starts to move inward a little bit. This is actually called a transitional surface, if I'm, I will write, uh, which means that there are two surfaces and uh, they have this kind of like connection in between, which is extremely smooth. But to the other part, it's smooth, yet uh, the curvature start to change. But the connection in between, the transition should be perfect. So the continuity is still G2 continuity at least, but there's a big sag here. So let's see how we do it. And uh, in order to make this sagging a little bit, we have to turn on the points and uh, start moving it. As we explained before that cutting this off will not change the control points. So this control points is still the whole surface. It's just hide it basically, hide the rest of the surface for this small piece. In order to detailly control this surface, we have to shrink it, uh, shrink all the control points to the surface region, which is, let's show how we do it. I mean, a lot of those concepts are very hard to be explained in word vocabularies. So let's show you how to do it. So come over here, surface, and then there's this uh, command called shrink trimmed surface. Okay, we click it and now we turn it on. Okay, in order to show you what's the difference in between, I will give you an example. So I will drag this here. So I will come over here and uh, trim. Okay, so I will turn on the surface and uh, then also turn on this one. And uh, if we just change this part, actually those parts of the surface will also be changed. However, if we change these points, the continuity and uh, the controls of this part of the surface will be remained. So nothing will be changed. So the change will be all be local. That's which, uh, which is what we want because we want to keep this transition in between. The next thing I will do is, so I will come over here and um, shrink trim surface, hit okay. Turn on the points and then I will move it in a little bit, Go, come to the top view. Also those four points, move it in a little bit more, go to perspective and voila, this is what we want. Perfect. The next thing I would do is I will blend surfaces. Blend surf, first edge, second edge and hit OK. As you can see that if we don't change anything in between, this uh, kind of part will be very entangled, this wireframe. And if we turn on the zebra line to check the continuity of the surface, we will see this kind of like messed up, right? This is not, this is exactly not what we want. So we have to do some tricks here, delete it, uh, blend surface again, okay, okay. And we will add some shapes in between. Okay, and then we will, uh, let's turn off the wireframes or the surface ISO curve, so we will see more clearly. And now we right click, and so we can adjust this a little bit. And come here, adjust this curvature a little bit. And let's see. If it doesn't work, we will do it again. So we will check the zebra, right? The continuity in between has been perceived, uh, preserved. Okay, so yeah, which is very good for all those parts and for vertical, so same. Although this looks like there are dramatic change in between, but once you zoom in, those zebra's lines are still continued. This is exactly what we want. Okay, so the next step we will do, uh, we will come over here and then turn on the 
to the rendered mode. And you can see that this surface is exactly what it's showing here. You can see that from this edge to this edge, it's kind of long. From this point to this point is kind of short, right? Perfect. The next step we will do is we will join them together and come to the front view. And I will zoom in here. You will realize that if we connect from this point to this point, you will realize that blend surface will create this sort of weird and curved edge. That is something we don't want uh, to make a surface. So what we need to do is actually we will unhide everything. We'll find the curve that we will use to split this. Hopefully we will, um, if we couldn't find it, we will just draw this curve again. Scale it up a little bit, come over here and then move it to this direction. Make sure that I am just over this edge and uh, also come to the bottom. I'm just over this edge and hit OK and go to the front view. And now I will hide this piece and I will type trim. Select cutting objects, which is this line, and select objects to trim. I will select everything. Okay, so this part will be completely flat. And the next step it, I will do is I will join everything, hide this part, mirror it. Perfect. And then join them together. Okay, so let's unhide it, isolate this item. Sorry, I'll select here, isolate the objects and hide, every, uh, hide everything else. And then check the edge. Okay, so there's no other edges in between other than where it should be, which is perfect. The next thing I would do is come over here and then select uh, this thing called cap planner close, which means they will detect the like planners edges on the surface and then make a fill up a surface there. And uh, after that, what I want to do is I want to create this kind of fillet, fillet here. Uh, and uh, in order to do so, we have a command here. It's called fillet edges. Okay. And I will select the face edge, select the face, hit enter. And let's see. So you can see there are, there are a lot of mistakes here, which is uh, we kind of expected because this radius is just too big. So we're going to change the radius a little bit. Let's make it 0 0.2. And hit it enter and uh, hit faces edge, select and hit enter again. OK, so this part is actually pretty decent. Everything looks amazing. Right, and we turn on the ISO curve on the surface, and we can see that, well, every ISO curve is actually doing very great. Nothing is kind of entangled or overlapped. So we will go from there. Perfect, you can adjust the radius by a model a little bit, and uh, uh, we can work on it together if you couldn't find the right number. So I will hide this part and then start for the rest of this uh, overall shape. I'll come to the front view and let's observe this first. So as you can see on this photo, we will try to change it to wireframe, go to the front view. And then as you can see here that this thing is this like uh, being split. So this part has been split by this kind of curved surface into two pieces, right front piece and the back piece. So what I will do is I will come over here and draw this curve. Hit OK. I'll adjust it a little bit. I mean, remember, less control points is, more uh, concise this curve uh, surface will be, and uh, which is good for our calculation and uh, to ensure the accuracy of the surface. OK, so this is pretty. Mm, I can change this a little bit more. Okay, so now this is pretty decent. And what I will do is I will come over here. I will go back to the shaded mode. 
come out and then drag this. So as you can see that we will select this little red, a uh, little circular shape and then drag it on this direction. Okay, perfect. I will isolate this. And then what I will do, there are many, like 50 different ways to do it, but I will just do it like in a stupid way. We just select objects to split uh, and uh, select cutting objects. Now we get two pieces, All right? Again, I will control C, control V and send one to the back. And also I will split this part, select objects to split, cutting objects, perfect. And then I will join them together and this will become an individual piece. So I'm going to come to the front view. The next thing I will do is I will make this smaller, right? So I would scale it and uh, to make sure that these points will not move. So we will type in scale, select these points, and uh, I will do orthogonal, just move it up a little bit and uh, yeah, come up to this point. So make sure that this point will touch here. But as you can see that uh, once we scale in that way, this part has been um, shortened a little bit. What we can do here is we can do a command called extend surface. So extend surf and select edge of the surface to extend. Okay, so now I cannot select it. Maybe because this thing is kind of joint surface. So we have to, it can only do an untrimmed surface. So I would do extend surf, select on edge. Okay, so we will come to the front view. Come to the front view. Okay, that's a little bit too much. Let's do it again. And uh, hit enter, perfect. As you can see that this part is a little bit missed. So I will turn on the control points here and then rotate it a little bit. And then just select those points, move it along this direction, inward a little bit, right? And then also, yeah, also this part, we will turn on the control points, move this along the direction, wireframe direction a little bit. It doesn't have to be extremely accurate uh, because mathematically it's all the same as long as you don't do something crazy on the surface. So, okay. And then we will come over here and see if it's uh, overlapped. If it's, it is, that's enough. And we will next we will do we will come to the front view and split the surface again. Okay, so now we get this kind of overall shape. Right, we 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 can mirror it and that will that will look what it looks like. So here comes to the one of the most challenging part of our uh, whole project is how to make this surface have a very smooth transition. What I will do is first, I will explode everything, delete this part, come to the top, trim this part too, okay, and then come to this part. And then the next thing I will do is I will check the edge condition of all those surfaces. Okay, not too bad. I would select this surface and this surface and type in duplicate border. Okay, so we got two borders and we explode them. I will select this border and join with this border. So I will join it, same as this one and this one. I will join them together. The next thing I will do is I will do a, com a command called pipe. I will type in pipe and select a rail, I will type in one, how about 1.5? Let's do 1.5, 1.5 and 1.5, hit enter. Okay, so here, same as this one. 
And then next part I will do is I will split the surfaces with those uh, pipes. I'll select objects to split, hit enter, and select cutting objects, hit enter. I will send those back to our backup layer. I'll delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this part, this part, and this part. So what we need to do is we kind of uh, have to make sure that every connection in between is going to be smooth, which is quite, to be honest, quite challenging. So you see that the radius of the pipe is too big, so they kind of like unevenly split those curves here. So this should be continuous, but it has been split. But it should be fine. Uh, we, we can go over with it, but we should join them together and we will keep this surface. So let's check the continuity zebra. You see it's continuous, uh, so it's continuous surface, so it's good. And the next thing I would do is I will start to uh, blend them together. So blend surface. Let's check the continuity. So you can see that, okay, it's still good. And uh, you can see that there are some sort of stop points in between. And to accurately understand what's on what's behind it, let's go to this thing called show edges. We will select all the objects, hit OK. And you can see that there are some stop points in between. Okay. That means that this edge is not continuous and there are some breaking points in between. And sometimes we can remove it. Uh, let's see if this is a case. We come to this show edges and there's this little triangle here. We hit OK and we joint merge edges. Let's see if we can merge this one with this one. Okay, we can't, unfortunately. So what we have to do is we have to make some cuts in between so they can join together. Uh, this curve can only reach to this curve. So when we match the surface or when we are blend the surface together, it will range from here to here unless we split some points in between. Okay, so what we will do is we will come to here and then come over here and uh, split edge. I'll select the edge I want to split. And I will use this points as reference. Okay, perfect. And uh, so this part can connect with this part. This edge will match this edge. This edge will match this edge, right? This edge will match this edge. Makes sense. So what I will do next is I will blend them together. Blend surface again, this edge and this edge. Okay, see this point edge should also be split. So let's come to over here and uh, split edge. Hit okay. Let's just keep the view of this um, edge conditions. So I'll blend surf, first curl, uh, edge, second edge, hit OK. OK, and uh, let's just keep doing that. Hit OK. Hit OK. Oh, it looks pretty good, except the because we were focusing on blend this and this surface, we saw thinking about the, um, the side conditions. And that's what's going on right here. We will match that later. And let's finish this whole process by keep doing it. OK, so overall, right now, this actually looks pretty decent. Let's select the thing, turn on the zebra. You can see that, right? Most of the surface continuity has been preserved, except for those side conditions and that is when the mesh surface jump in and which is one of the most important uh, topic for our project so we kind of introduced the mesh surface uh earlier a little bit and in this part i'm going to explain all the details that you need to know about mesh surface so mesh surface is used for the conditions that's this kind of like edge condition that there are two surfaces overlap the um endpoints a little bit or some cases like that and then 
we are trying to match it to make sure that the continuity in between those two surfaces will be preserved. And so let's start with this. And it's called untrimmed surface edge to, uh, to start with. And then if we do that here, you can see that there's this kind of um, twisted surface continuity. When you turn on the zebra and you check it, actually the continuity of the surface is great. However, it's completely wrong because we are matching the wrong side. And the reason behind it is actually quite simple. It's because this edge is so long while this edge uh, is very short. And in order to do that, we have to split the surface first. And we can, um, yeah, do that. I will type in split and we'll cutting objects. We will choose ISO curve, right? So we can select something like this in between and I will do the midpoint, I'll hit OK. So we kind of split this surface by using the ISO curve. So from now on, let's try to match the surface, OK? We type in match surface and uh, select untrimmed surface edge to change. You can see that I cannot select it, OK? Because this surface has been trimmed because we just split it with this ISO curve in between. So what I will do is from this surface, Untrimmed and then trimmed, hit OK. And here, do the same. But you can see that this surface, the continuity in between this has been destroyed. In order to do that, we have to undo this. And what we have to do is we're going to move this surface edge to here. So in a match surface, the first thing you select Okay, the first curve you select is going to be moved to match to the second curve you select. The order is very important. And now in this case, that the first curve or first edge cannot be selected because it has been trimmed. So what we have to do, what we have to do is come over here and then only select one surface, okay? We come to this command called, again, shrink trimmed surface. So, and we turn on the curvature, okay? So it's going to be preserved. Oh, another thing I want to mention real quick is that let's come over here and then turn on the surface here. So I'll explain one thing to you. When we use a thing called blend surface between this edge and uh, this edge, and there are things called position, tangency, and curvature. So what is that? Okay, what is that? position, tangency, and curvature. So in order to understand that, we will find a map, uh, like an image to understand what's going on. So this is a good one, I think. Let's look at the uh, curves first. If it's G0 connection, that means they are, the end of those two curves are matched, but the continuity in between has been ignored. It's just violently moving these two curves together. Okay, for G1 connection, that means the tangency for this end point, okay, has been matched in between. So this curve is smoother than before. And then for the G2 connection, is the tangency of the tangent has been preserved too, uh, so on and so forth. So long story short, all you have to know is that in modeling process, most of the time, we have to at least get G2 uh, like continuity for the surfaces when you are modeling something. And that's what those position, tangency, and curvature means. They are, according, uh, they are like have this mapping relationship. G0 is position, G1 is like tangency, and G2 is um, like curvature so on and so forth. Same as the surface. Again, in industrial design, G2 is often what we want. You don't want it to be too high because when we, for example, in the car modeling industry, when we have so many control points, it's gonna be hard for the um, engineers to take your model and to work on it. So this is just kind of like an industry standard and let's keep G2 as our goal. Okay, so again, this is just a continuity of the surface. We will hide it, and then we will start working on it again. So uh, by 
shrink this uh, trimmed surfaces, we kind of have this edge. Now it's going to be untrimmed. So let's test it out. And then we will do match again, surface, and select untrimmed. OK, now we can select it and hit Enter. So now the continuity, which is tangency or curvature, right? I mean, usually what we want to have is curvature and um, uh, G0, G1, G2. So I will do this. But as you can see that in this, uh, is this case, it will dramatically change this continuity in between here. So in order to make sure that this will not be changed, not be messed up, we want to choose tangency. And then this preserve the other end, which is, so the continuity is talking about what's gonna happen on this side and preserve on the other end, actually in this case, doesn't matter. Why is that? Okay, we're gonna come back to this surface and turn on the surface again. So G0 is G0 continuity means that we are only gonna mess up this line of points. We are only gonna move these points violently, brutally to this surface and to continue. Uh, to this side, okay? So G1 will be, we're gonna adjust this part too to make sure that the tangency along those lines gonna be matched with the other side. And then the G3, which is curvature, we're gonna work on this one too. So no matter how we're gonna do this, how we're gonna change those points here, this side of the surface, the relationship between this surface and this surface are dominated by those lines of control points, they are not going to be affected at all because we have so many points in between. And that's why we it doesn't matter which one we choose on the other end. Okay, so we're going to come back here, match surface, this, this, and then preserve other end, right? It doesn't matter at all because no matter what which one do you choose, we have so many points here that the curvature on this side is not gonna affect this side. And if this is not gonna be affected, the continuity between this surface and this surface is not gonna change, okay? So, and then automatic and preserve ISO curve direction. You can simply understand as preserves ISO curve direction as they're gonna keep the constructive, like, uh, sorry, wireframe on this both sides. If they don't automatically, they will mess up with it with different algorithm behind it. And usually we only we only choose either automatic or preserve ISO curve direction. And then on this case, I want to preserve this relationship between this surface and this surface. So I will choose preserve ISO curve direction. And in order to, in terms of average surface, again, this is uh, something usually I don't choose because if you average the surface, it's basically trying to create another kind of smooth connection in between. Um, and that's not what we want. And in terms of match edge by close point, what it does is that, for example, mathematically from this point to this line, the closest point is here, right? So if we match it, you can see that they are trying to drag these points together. So in this case, I want the wireframe to be continuous. So I will just leave those and hit okay. And again, I will select on the side, I will do the same. We cannot do it right now because I haven't shrinked it yet. So I'll come over here and shrink match surface. Hit OK. So let's test it out. It might won't work. It might works. So let's test it out. OK, so we come to this from this zebra line all the way here. This part definitely works and all the continuity in between has been preserved, which is good. It's not perfect as you can see that. You still can see a little bit edge here. So let's do it again. Okay, let's make it perfect. We will try. Match again, match surface. Hit okay and let's change to curvature. And uh, hit okay again and uh, shrink this a little bit. Match surface, this curve to this curve, hit OK. Zebra, 
and you can see that this part has been dragged, okay? So I will turn on this again all together. So now, well, this has been matched much better, but this part has been filled. So what we have to do next is we're gonna come back here and match surface on this side also. The adjoined surfaces. So I will enjoin them, match surface, this side and this. I will turn on the edge condition. I'll split this little bit. Match, match, match closest point. So I don't have to split it. I just have to match the closest point. So this end point will find this surface. I will search the end, uh, search the closest point on this edge uh, instead of connect from this point to this point, okay? So I will hit okay. Same as this side and this edge, hit okay, let's see. So now we can join them together. I will turn on the zebra in between. Okay, so now it's smooth here. Let's check all of them together and join zebra. Okay, so the continuity in this part has been curvature. So Z, uh, zero, uh, like G3 continuity, which is a G2 continuity, which is great. And this part has also been are very smooth and uh, let's join this part also and um, zebra okay so the continu continuity has been preserved all along the surface let's change to horizontal same which is great so the next part we will do is going to match those surface too this is much easier we just we can unclick it or click it doesn't matter because those points has been matched anyway. Preserve the ISO curve. This part also. Curvature position. And you can see that this part has been disma uh, dismatched. We join them together. We check, we can not join in this with this surface is because when we mesh this part, we dragged it too much, so we have to match this edge also again. Match, match, make make uh, match edges by closest point again. This one and this one, hit OK, and then join them all together. Now it's a continuous object. Sorry that took so long, but this is actually how we do it in the real uh, in industry. So we go over here and then turn on the rendered. You can see that the surface is pretty smooth. This is just a reference line here. We can hide it. Okay, and we're gonna turn on the zebra. Everything is continuous, which is bravo. We are gonna to go to the shaded. Now, we're gonna check last time about the edge conditions. We're gonna come over here and then check sorry check the edge click it so we can see that there's still a mismatch here let's let's make sure that's going to be close to match surface let's uh, explode it first before we can match it again match surface this edge and this edge match by closest point it okay Let's see the edge conditions. No, okay, so perfect. Let's check the zebra line again. Perfect, now it's done. That's how we do it. Okay, so we're gonna come over here and hide everything else. 
you're going to find a center line like we definitely sure it's where it should be and we select object mirror along this center and join them together and let's check this one more time okay now it it's perfect okay so I'll hide this part and we're going to come over to the front view this part has been cut so blah, blah, blah. we're going to come over here trying to put a cap here okay now we can put a cap and we're going to join them together all together and uh, so as you can see that the overall shape of this uh, model has been get, uh, generated which is exactly what we want uh, one more one more thing i want to do again i want to check the zebra okay it's quite satisfying to see because there is although there's a cap in between uh, like there's a fillet in between that this continuous of the surface still is very accurate or satisfying okay now we will move to the next step of modeling the inside and all the details around.